so special. <laughs> well, our scripture today for our youth is the same what place in Philippians that we're going to be today. It says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Philippians 4, verse 6. Can you say the bottom? Jesus loves you. Shall we say it together? One, two, three. Jesus loves you. Awesome. Let's, let's go ahead and pray. And I'm also going to pray for our Izzy. I thought this would be the appropriate place to put his prayer request. Because I, we, one of the things we're going to be committed to through 2021 is praying for our 18 25 year olds like Lonnie pointed out they're trying they're searching they're searching they're trying to figure out where they stand so praying specifically for them as well as our little ones is so important let's pray oh heavenly father lord I lift up our Henry to you father his mama his daddy his brother his sister and his entire family Lord, I pray that you will let him know that Jesus loves him. Help him to know, Father, to worry about nothing and to pray to you for anything that he needs. Give his community, Father, all of us, the wisdom that he will feel loved and cared about. Father, I also want to pray for those who are not with us today but they're in our community as well. And I also want to pray, Father, for our youth across the nation. These times can be really challenging for our children. Help us, Father, to protect them. But we know, Lord, the ultimate protection comes from you. Father, I also cry out to you for our amazing Israel. Father, he wants his life to be better. Not that there's a problem specific, but he wants your guidance, Lord, as he continues his journey through adulthood. And we ask, Lord, that you will bless him on that journey. Reveal to him his gifts and his passions so he can boldly stand where you are taking him. And help him, Lord, to know that Jesus loves him and you are alive. We ask all this, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, sweetheart. You can go back and help Denny. Well, what an amazing opportunity we have, right? To, to be that mentor and teachers of our youth and of our children. And it's important to listen to them during these times. Well, you know, what a week, right? What a week. What a few months as we went through this horrific coronavirus that I believe it's over 370,000 American lives. And on Friday, I believe we lost a record number of 4,000 lives in our country. These numbers are staggering. They're absolutely staggering. But you know, in all these challenges that we're going through, we went through a presidential election that had a lot of divisiveness and division in it. And whatever we believe, or whichever side, the political side, I always want us to remember that we are children of the Most High. We are neither Democrat or Republican. And like I've said before, we don't mean that in the sense that you don't, are not active in your communities, absolutely. But what I want us to carry away today is how we have peace in Jesus. You know, I, I was inspired by a video that I was listening to another pastor, and I was inspired by the chaplain that they pray, I believe his name's Chaplain Black, they pray by Potterson, senators come together and they pray for our nation. This is what we are commissioned to do, not to hunker down and worry about the outcomes of things, but to pray about all things. And, 
You know, one of the things that Lonnie kind of pointed out, she said, you know, you pray about something and then you take action. When we pray about things, we look for the answer that God has given us because we're part of it. Our Lord is relational. Relationships with our Father, with Jesus Christ, relationships with the Spirit that's in us is so, so important. It's not something we want to take lightly. Relationships with one another are priceless. Right? They're priceless. The relationships we have with our individual families, the relationships we have in our communities, the relationships we have in our churches, and not just our churches, churches that walk alongside of us. We are all in the body of Christ, and that's where we get our peace. That's exactly where we get our peace. We don't find peace in screaming, yelling, arguing with one another. We find peace when we stop, pause, listen to each other, right? Not listening with what I'm going to say next. And we've talked about this a lot. This scripture is not new to us. Philippians 4. Verse 6, that's not new to us. I've given full sermons on this many times, at least one or two other times. But I felt like, as I prayed about, Lord, what do I talk about? What do I inspire and encourage your children with today? How do I not do any additional harm? And then I realized what we saw in our capital, none of us can be comfortable with. A, a capital security police officer was murdered. None of us can be okay with that. A young woman was killed. None of us can be okay with that. And three other people died because the crowd was such a mob medical attention couldn't get to them. We are children of the Most High. None of us can be okay with that. Take out anything else we might believe. We can't be okay with that. When George Floyd's breath was, was taken out of him, and an officer laid on his chest for eight minutes for the world to see him die. None of us can be okay with that. These are not, these are not issues that should divide us. These are issues we should be united around. As Christians, we should be crying out to the, our Father, bring peace to our streets. Bring peace, Lord, to our neighborhoods. Help us to show love and compassion for each other. That's who we are. My brothers and sisters, that's who we are as Christians. We are children of the Most High. We cannot be okay with someone murdering someone. We can't. So many fought right beside their brothers and sisters, regardless to their color, for civil rights to go through in the 60s. People fought and died for that. People fought to have the right to vote. Those are the things that should ignite us in unity, not in division. And believe it or not, I believe that we as pastors and teachers have to call it like we see it, in love, in support, understanding that we may have a different point of view. And that's okay. But for all of us, 
Yes, we can have a different point of view of who we want to be the leaders of our nation. Absolutely. That's what makes our democracy such an, an, an awesome gift that God has given us. That's a beautiful thing. We should have different political powers. We should have different beliefs. But we should be humble and kind in those beliefs. Because when we listen to each other, we see each other's point of view. Isn't that amazing? Don't you, don't you enjoy that? And if we hear one another, we maybe see what our brother or sister is thinking. Kindness, patience. Peace comes from Jesus Christ. Peace comes from our Father. We talk about the power of prayer. We talk about how that power of prayer helps us all to know who our Lord is. It's not something we have to guess at. And I'll bet if I went to each and every one of you, you could tell me a God sighting in your own personal lives because we've all had them, every single one of us. Every single one of us. We've had challenges and we've watched our Lord show up and carry us through them. One of my most wonderful poems that my granddaughter and my grandson and my beautiful granddaughter is with me today. She's been taking care of me for the last 10 days as I had my surgery on my wrist. But they brought me the, uh, a poem, Footprints in the Sand. I'm sure some of you are familiar with it. But I'll just bottom line it. The bottom line on that poem is that when there was only one set of footprints, Jesus said, those were mine, because that's when I carried you. Never forget, my brothers and sisters, Jesus carries us, carries us through the challenges in our world and in our lives. Do not become complacent about the power of your prayers. When we have peace in our streets and peace in our nation, we all benefit. Peace does not mean we have to all think alike, but peace means we respectfully differ with one another, with humility and respect. We will disappoint each other sometimes. So let's have forgiveness in our hearts for those times that we disappoint each other. So we're going to be in Philippians 4. We're going to go through verses 4 through 9. And I'm going to, and as you, we go through the scripture, think about the things we've already said and unpacked with the scriptures. Because the scripture helps us stand on the knowledge we've been given. And it helps us to make wiser decisions as we go forward. Our decisions should be based on who is our savior and how do my actions amplify to everyone I come in contact with that I am a child of the Most High. How do my, our actions amplify that? It doesn't, those actions don't amplify that if we're physically harming each other, right? Jesus didn't harm us. Jesus didn't come here to harm us. He came here to save us. What side are we going to stand on? Okay, verse four. Always be full of joy in who? In the Lord. I say it again, rejoice. That's what gives us joy. 
is who is Jesus? It's what gives us joy in our hearts, in our walk. But you know what, brothers and sisters? You can't say who Jesus is if we don't love each other. By my, your love, they will know you are my disciples, right? By your love, we'll know who we are. That's how we get to a rejoicing place. We can't have a rejoicing place if we don't have love in our hearts. We just can't. Let's go on in verse 5. Let everyone see that you are considerate in all you do. Are you considerate in all that we do? Considerate. You know, it's easy to be considerate if we agree with each other. What's hard is to take a pause when you might have a different point of view. Are we considerate to people who think different than we do? That's what you're looking for. That's the change we're trying to have. Do we have, are we considered in all that we do? Remember, the Lord is coming soon. We talk about this. Just as Jesus left our world and sent the Holy Spirit to us, he said he would come again. You know what's so important about that coming again? A lot of people, and, and that's okay, my point of view, is that what is Jesus going to find me doing when he comes again? Is he going to find me taking care of the hungry, feeding those who are hungry, giving shelter to those who are cold? Is that what Jesus is going to find me doing? Or he's, is he going to find me refusing to take care of the hungry? Refusing to give shelter to someone who is cold? Jesus is coming, my brothers and sisters. What's he going to find us doing? Right? Important. Verse 6. Now, this is where the rubber hits the road. In my mind, for me, when I get scared, I have to remind myself. I walk through my house, worry about nothing, pray about everything, everything you need. We need peace in our nation. I'm going to challenge every single one of us, whether you're watching this on the YouTube or if you're sitting in this sanctuary. Pray for peace in our nation. And I don't care who we voted for. Not important. But we all want peace. We all want calm in our streets. We all want someone to be able to go home to their family at night. That officer didn't get to go home to his family, simply doing his job. The young woman who came there to protest and to, and to, to march, whatever we think of her, she deserved to go home. She didn't deserve to be killed. Those people that died because no one could get to them, they deserve to go home. So we want peace. We don't want to sit back, judge why it happened, and worry about it. Let's take it to our Father in prayer and encourage everyone you know that understands who Jesus is to do the same thing. Remember, Jesus reigns in heaven and on earth. So it's up to us to fall on our knees and pray for what we need. And I don't care where we stand, we need 
peace, right? Worry about, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything, everything. Now, I'm really focused this sermon on peace in our streets because we had the opposite of that this week. And I don't want to walk around the elephant in the living room. But you have other needs as well. Take them to your father. You have other stuff that's important to you. Everything. Everything, right? Pray about everything and watch what your Lord is doing. Tell God what you need. Let's underline that. Tell God what you need. I can't tell you what you need, but you know what your needs are. Ask God for your needs. You need a, rela- a better relationship with your wife or your husband or your children. Ask God for what you need. Ask for what you need. And, now doesn't this amplify that God is going to give you what you need? And thank him for all he has done. We don't always know. We just don't, but God does. He knows at the, at the core of what we need. But the relationship is for us to join by asking. Do you think God needs us to ask? No, but he wants that beautiful, amazing relationship with us. Wants us to depend on him. Depend on our Father. Depend on what Jesus taught us. Depend on the Holy Spirit guiding you. Don't be afraid of it. You have gifts that you've been given. All of us, every single one of us, embrace those gifts. Boldly stand on them. Let's go on to verse 7. What happens when we do these things? Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. God's peace exceeds anything that we as mere mortals could understand. But when you ask for it, understanding will open up. God's will always be something we don't understand fully. We're being told, Paul's telling us here, that we're going to experience God's peace. When? When we worry about nothing. Pray about everything, and then praise God for what he's done. That's when you're going to experience true peace. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Jesus Christ. In Christ Jesus His peace will guard our hearts and our minds as we live in Christ Jesus. Isn't that something? You can't think right if you're all wound up with worry. You can't, we can't, we can't think right if we're all bound in fear. God didn't give us the spirit of fear but one of love and power and a sound mind. God's telling us how to have peace on earth. Are we listening? Do we believe it? Are we allowing the noise in our head to block what Jesus has taught us? Don't let that happen, my brothers and sisters, because you do get to choose. Don't let the noise that's out there get into your head and move you to darkness instead of to light. Let's go on in verse 8. And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts 
on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and adorable. Things, think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. You really did we hear that what are we supposed to be thinking on look at that what and we ch are challenged with this aren't we because there's so much information out there and it's all over the place like somebody just bleh, on a wall right it's just all over the place but you know who gives you truth jesus that's where our truth comes from that's who we pray to. Look at all these things that we're supposed to put up, fix our thoughts on. What's true? What is true? Jesus Christ is true. The love we should have for each other is true. And how do we know? Are we patient? Are we kind? Honorable. Oh, wow. Have we strayed so far? from what is honorable. What is honorable? Each person will have to search their hearts to answer that question. What is honorable? I encourage you, read Philippians 4. Read the whole chapter. Paul is talking to the church. He's talking to the communities. He's telling them how to get to peace. So maybe they were struggling with a lot of the same things that we're struggling with now. I'll bet they were. Let's go on to verse nine. Keep putting into practice all you have learned and received from me. Everything you heard from me and saw me doing then the God of peace will be with you. Paul's telling us. He's giving us information. Jesus showed us who he was. He's telling us how we get to peace. Remember the title of this sermon? Peace in Jesus. Peace in Jesus. Not peace in a physical human being. Our peace comes from Jesus, our, we pray that whoever our leader is, is exhibiting all of these things because they're going to bring the nation to a more peaceful place. But guess what? We are human and we falter and we fall. And that's okay too. Jesus came because we're sinners, not because we're perfect. There will be no perfect people, us included. There just will be none. There will absolutely be none. But we can do the best that we can. We can embrace the things Jesus has taught us, and we can bring ourselves to a love place. So what do I want our takeaways to be today? Well, I think we've, we've said this one, but I believe that Repetition is the mother of the student. Don't worry about anything. As you go through your day, as you go through your week, as we go through 2021, let's make this the year we stand in peace for our nation, for our world, and for each other. And Paul is showing us in Philippians how to get there. Peace in Jesus. And again, pray about anything. Anything, right? Anything you need, pray about it. And then be thankful. Thank God for everything. Everything, my brothers and sisters. Everything. Take those words to heart. And what happens then when we do these top three? What happens? Then you will experience God's peace. 
Now, when Jesus returns to this earth, remember we've talked about this, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that God is God. Every knee will bow to Jesus. So it's coming. True peace is truly coming. But in the meantime, what are we going to do? Sit on our rear ends and wait on it? It's not going to come that way. We have to actively participate in peace, knowing where it comes from. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you so much for the knowledge that you've given us, for teaching us that Jesus is how where our peace comes from. Thank you, Father, for, your, for giving us the knowledge and the understanding of how we find peace on earth by standing on solid ground. And Jesus is that solid ground. Father, I pray as we go through our neighborhoods, as we go back to our families, wherever we're at, let us not forget the importance of praying and building our relationship with you. We ask, Father, that you will bring peace to our cities, peace to our capitals, peace to our nation, Father. We ask that those of us that may be feel that we are divided will understand that you unite us and that we will stand in that unity. I am so grateful and thankful for the love of Jesus and all that you have given us on this earth as we go through way as and as we know Jesus is coming and we are so excited and looking forward to it but in the meantime Lord open our hearts open our minds to do the things that bring us peace until then we ask all this in Jesus name amen <laughs>